Sadly, now that summer is over and we've all gone back to our regular lives, we can now do a damage assessment of what we did to our poor skin from all the UV damage from the pool and beach days and any other frolicking you did outside while exposing your integument to the sun. And unfortunately, some of you may have done some damage with sunburns and overexposure that you could pay for in the future. So today, with the help of our cadaver skin dissections, we're going to look at the layers of the skin and talk about what UV exposure and sunburns does to each layer of the skin. Talk about how it can prematurely age the skin with age spots, wrinkles, and sagging, and even talk about how it can lead to skin cancer. But we can't be all negative in this video. We'll also discuss who is more at risk for sun damage and talk about prevention strategies that you can utilize to help reduce your risk of skin damage and cancer. It's going to be a radiant one. So let's jump into this anatomical and physiological awesomeness. So let's start by literally peeling back the layers of the skin because this will help us to understand how UV light can cause sun damage and even skin cancer. Here we're looking at a skin dissection from the mid back of one of the cadavers in our lab. The skin is your body's largest organ and it's made up of three main layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis, sometimes referred to as the subcutaneous layer. And so here you can see the epidermis, this outermost layer. And you can see some freckles and some sun damage, which we'll obviously be getting into soon. But also take a look at this cut edge. The majority of this cut edge is actually the dermis, but the top paper thin edge, that epidermis is only about the width of a sheet of paper. And so again, the majority of this is the dermis. And if we were to zoom in to the epidermis, we would see that it's made up of multiple layers of cells. And the majority of those cells are called keratinocytes. And these cells are constantly dividing and renewing themselves. However, within the bottom layer of cells of the epidermis, you will also see another cell type called melanocytes. And these cells produce melanin. And one melanocyte can contact over 30 keratinocytes with its cytoplasmic extensions. And what it does is dumps the melanin into those keratinocytes giving your epidermis its pigment that gives you color and some UV protection. And in general, the more melanin that your melanocytes produce, the darker your skin pigment. But again, below we have the dermis, which again we saw was the majority of this thickness making up the skin dissection. But this is also susceptible to sun damage. And what we'll find is that this thicker layer is full of collagen and elastic fibers that keep your skin firm and elastic. This layer, the dermis, also houses blood vessels, nerves, hair follicles, and even sweat glands. And the next layer, not technically part of the skin, but part of the whole integumentary system, is the hypodermis, which is mostly made of fat and connective tissue, providing insulation, energy storage, and cushioning. Now, UV rays from the sun, or tanning beds, don't treat all these layers the same. There are two main types of UV rays, UVA, which stands for ultraviolet A, and UVB, which stands for ultraviolet B. UVA rays make up about 95% of the UV that reaches us and are sometimes referred to as the aging rays due to their role in long-term skin damage like wrinkles and sagging. And they have longer wavelengths that allow them to penetrate deeper into the dermis. UVB rays, sometimes referred to as the burning rays because they're the main culprits behind sunburns, have higher energy photons that can cause more direct damage, but due to their shorter wavelength, they mostly affect the epidermis as shorter wavelengths are scattered and absorbed more in the superficial layers. But both UVA and UVB can cause problems. So let's figure out how. UV radiation is energy from the sun that's invisible to us, but it can pack a punch at the cellular level. When UVB rays hit the epidermis, they're absorbed directly by your DNA in the epidermal cells that we learned earlier as keratinocytes. But it can also affect the DNA of the melanocytes. This creates these funky bonds called pyrimidine dimers, which basically means that your DNA gets twisted and mutated, which can lead to errors when cells divide, which will be important in our skin cancer discussion in just a second. But it can also result in age spots, also called solar lentigines, which are these patches of hyperpigmentation from the melanocytes misbehaving and producing too much melanin in those areas. And so you can see some of those on this skin dissection right here, as well as some other sun damage as well. And I should mention that although UVB is key for these direct effects, both rays contribute to hyperpigmentation 
and cancer risk over time. And as we already mentioned, UVA rays go deeper into the dermis, where they can generate free radicals, which are unstable molecules that bounce around like little pinballs and steal electrons from other molecules, which can damage those molecules, which in turn damages the collagen and elastin that are extremely important for the integrity of the dermis. And these free radicals can also damage DNA. Over time, this breaks down the skin's structure, leading to wrinkles and sagging. But let's talk about the short term, or that immediate sting that we call the sunburn. When your skin is overexposed to UVB rays, it triggers an inflammatory cascade within the skin. Cytokines and other inflammatory mediators flood the area, causing blood vessels in the dermis to dilate, causing the redness and heat. In severe cases, it leads to blistering as fluid builds up between the epidermis and the dermis. But why are some people more prone to sunburns than others? Well, it largely comes down to melanin, the pigment produced by melanocytes that absorbs UV rays and protects DNA. Those with fair skin have less melanin, offering weaker natural shielding, so they burn faster. Darker skin tones have more melanin for better protection, but can still burn with prolonged exposure. Genetics are obviously going to play a role, influencing melanin production and repair efficiency, while factors like altitude, time of day, or certain medications can heighten skin sensitivity even more. But sunburns aren't just painful, they can also be a warning sign. Experiencing five or more blistering sunburns between ages 15 and 20 increases your melanoma risk by 80%. And repeated burns suppress your skin's immune response, making it harder for your body to spot and destroy damaged cells. And so now, the scary part. Chronic UV exposure is the leading cause of skin cancers, responsible for about 90% of all skin cancer cases. There are three main types of skin cancer. Basal cell carcinoma, which accounts for about 78 to 80% of skin cancers, affects the basal layer of the epidermis, or in other words, affects the keratinocytes at the bottom of the epidermis. Squamous cell carcinoma accounts for about 20% of skin cancers and affects the keratinocytes in the upper portion of the epidermis. And malignant melanoma accounts for about 1-2% to of skin cancers and affects those melanocytes. Melanoma is the deadliest because it is more likely to metastasize quickly, which means it is more likely to spread to other regions of the body. And the reason for this is that the melanocytes sit at the base of the epidermis and UV-induced mutations cause these cells to start dividing out of control, eventually invading downward towards the dermis. And the reason why this is concerning is that the dermis is where the blood vessels are located. And again, if these cancerous melanocytes get into the bloodstream, they could spread and cause cancer at a secondary site, such as a more vital organ, like the lungs, liver, or brain. And we cover much more of this in our specific skin cancer video that I'll link at the end. But more than two people die from skin cancer every hour in the US, which is very unfortunate because skin cancer is one of the easiest cancers to treat, as it's literally right on the surface and fairly easy to remove. And so these deaths are almost always due to delayed detection. Because if you actually detect cancer early, like melanoma, early detection of melanoma has a five-year survival rate of nearly 99%. And here's something else that is also hopeful. Regular use of SBF 15 and above cuts melanoma risk by 50%. And so let's talk a little bit more about sunscreen. There are two main types of sunscreens, physical and chemical. Physical sunscreens like zinc oxide or titanium oxide sit on the skin's surface and act like a shield, reflecting and scattering UV rays before they penetrate. Chemical sunscreens absorb into the upper epidermis where they kind of soak up UV energy like a sponge and convert it to harmless heat. You want to look for broad spectrum sunscreens, which means the sunscreen includes protection against both UVA and UVB rays. SPF 30 is great for daily use, and SPF 50 if you're going to be spending a bit of time outdoors. You want to apply this 30 minutes before sun exposure and reapply it every two hours or so, even on cloudy days when 80% of UV rays still get through. And also choose water resistant sunscreens for swimming and sweating. But sunscreen may not be enough all by itself. You still may want to consider making use of shaded areas between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Wear protective clothing like hats and sunglasses. And of course, these protective strategies are going to be more important for melanin-challenged people like myself. Or in other words, those that don't have as much natural UV protection due to lighter skin pigment. I'm assuming that most of you watching these videos has a little bit of a science nerd in you. 
And if you enjoy the sciences and love learning, I've got the fix for you, and you can try it for free. And that is the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform that helps you get smarter every single day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. Brilliant's lessons are designed to be uniquely effective as their first principles approach builds understanding from the ground up through problem solving and engaging hands-on exploration, all of which are extremely important for not only learning new information, but also retaining it and helping you to become a better thinker so that you can apply your knowledge to the real world. And of course, the science nerd in me is going to geek out about brilliant science courses, as these courses help you make sense of our universe at every level, from the mechanics of simple machines all the way up to the mind-bending physics of black holes. And so if you want to learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org IHA, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant is also giving our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting the channel, and thank you to all of you for watching our videos about the human body. And of course, we'll see you in the next one.